Welcome to another Good E Reader video review. This is Marcus. And this is Peter. And today we're going to review the new Kindle. This is the latest generation, fourth generation Kindle. Right off the bat, you can see that it is a di way different design from previous versions of the Kindle. You notice there is no physical keyboard. So this definitely makes it more portable, easier to carry. It still has a six inch e-ink display, resolution 600 by 800 pixels, 167 PPI and 16 levels of grayscale. For internal memory, you have two gigs and this will store your books. But of course, this Kindle, because it is low cost, it does not have speakers or a headphone jack. So this means is that it is unable to play audio books. Uh, there's two different versions of this one. There's the special offers and there's the non-special offers. If you had the special offers, when you register your device, you would see a little banner there. And when you had your e-reader in standby mode, you would see ads on the screensaver. You notice we just see kind of a default thing. Right off, you can see how, how um, just from that picture, how great e-ink actually looks. Very high contrast, high resolution. Battery lasts for about four weeks and it takes only four hours to fully charge your device. It is Wi-Fi only, but it does read a lot of ebook formats, uh, text and all the proprietary Amazon formats as well as PDF, doc, docx, JPEG. Uh, if you want pictures, like I said, JPEG, GIF, PNG, BMP. Let's take a look at more or less uh, the visual aesthetics and all the buttons on the device. So looking on the bottom of the device, you have a micro USB, and this is used to facilitate data to and from your device, as well as charge your device with the accompanying cable. You have a power button. This uh, powers off, uh, powers on your device, as well as puts your device in a standby mode. On the front of the device, you notice that you have a home button, a settings button, a keyboard button and a back button and we'll get into exactly what they do uh, once we point out the rest of the features on the left and right hand side you have page turn buttons so page turn forward back and on the other side they also have that as well so it's a good device for both right and left handed people there's no other buttons anywhere else on the device no inputs no expandable memory or speakers or anything like that it's very slim compact and again very easily portable let's take a look at the software side of things this kindle uses a new operating system it's uh, called kindle 4.0 you notice uh, some new options right on the menu and you can see there's the new operating system there. On here, you can uh, press here and you can send Kindle email, date and time, dictionary, social networks, as well as popular highlights. So display passages that are most frequently highlighted by other Kindle users as you're reading the book. So let's maybe turn that on. And so when we're reading a book, we can check it out. Let's turn, let's turn all that on. Yeah, they are on at the moment, actually. They, oh, okay. They come preset with them on, yes. Oh, okay. Um, so let's take a look at the keyboard. This is pretty well, the mo one of the most prevalent features is the absence of the traditional uh, Kindle keyboard. Uh, you can see from looking at uh, the old Kindle with keyboard as it's known, you can really see the differentiation in size and form factor. I can't say I'm too big of a fan of this new keyboard. It's not a QWERTY layout. It's totally just A, B, C. It doesn't make it as intuitive if you're used to typing on virtual keyboards on Android devices, iOS, and so on. Even when you switch it into a different mode. Uh, if we were to uh, switch the orientation to say landscape mode, and you can see the screen orientation button on the main menu, so that makes it more effective. So we can uh, switch the orientation say into landscape, and then hit the keyboard. I kind of thought that it would make the keyboard like a full QWERTY, but apparently it's just the same keyboard and it's a little bit smaller. Um, can't say, uh, so far that's probably like the biggest drawback is uh, just the, um, I, I'm a fan of virtual keyboards. I mean, don't get me wrong, but I, I think this keyboard's really weak. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, not having, I mean, there's a reason for QWERTY to be what it is. It's because common words and phrases in English are meant to have those letters nearby. Whereas when you're in the keyboard on the Kindle, the regular Kindle, this particular one, it is A, B, C, D, no matter what uh, capitals, uh, no matter what of these kind of subfolders you go into, it will always be A, B, C, D. And it makes it a little more, a little, more, a little bit different when you're naturally wanting to go to Q, W, E, R at the top. It's not there. So, of course, you could just press the keyboard button to open and close it. And when you're in a book, it's of course, the resolution's not too bad. You do have a lot of settings uh, in here. Let's uh, let's view popular highlights, maybe, and see if there's anything here. Okay, so it shows you all the popular highlights on uh, the book. You know, um, different pages shows you 16 highlights. So you can kind of see what other people are all into, and then you can press uh, the page turn button and see them all. So I think that this is a kind of a cool little feature, and um, so maybe view notes and marks and just see what that looks. Okay, so there's no uh, notes or anything that I've written for this. Let's uh, just open up a new book that doesn't have any of this here. Let's hit uh, the settings button and you can see that there are a number of options uh, here. Search within a book. Let's, uh, let's check out this because this is really what makes the Kindle far ahead of other e-readers is that it really allows you to change a lot of fonts type base, line spacing, words per line, and this is something that a lot of other e-readers don't. Um, it doesn't look like it gives an option right now to actually change the font, or does it? They do kind of hide it right there. You can kind of see under the typeface, if you go here sans serif, there's not a list of fonts, no, but under the first thing here, yeah, you can can you can kind of change the font, I guess you could say. So the Kindle doesn't have a built-in accelerometer or gyroscope, so if you want to change the screen rotation, uh, you can do it within the book, but you could also do it on the main settings menu now, which makes it a little bit more intuitive. Uh, just some people more prefer to read it in landscape mode, or if you're left and right-handed, you can change it to display properly uh, for that perspective. Let's take a look at uh, the Kindle store. Uh, this is uh, really where you're going to be buying a lot of content. When you normally buy Amazon e-readers, you're really um, enwrapped into their ecosystem unless you're loading in your own books and using programs like Caliber to uh, load in, uh, you know, and, and convert ebooks from one format to another. You can see here you can browse by books, newspapers, magazines. Looks like they just hit a million there. Yep. This was, uh, Kindle actually hit a million about a week ago. And it's a little bit misleading because Amazon does have a number of you know free classic books uh, on their service so it's not like just a million bestsellers or anything like that but a million is uh you know it's uh, definitely pretty solid um, of course New York Times bestsellers Kindle bestsellers uh, there's a lot of um, you know things here as well as you know things to try the New York Times bestsellers is one of my favorite uh, things and it's cool that the Kindle um, and Amazon will show you straight up, you know, what are the most uh, popular books so you don't have to, you know, open up the web browser and manually, you know, go to the page. Uh, Kindle Singles is a new program that's really only been around for about four or five months uh, at most. Um, a Kindle Single, if you're not too familiar with it, are uh, they're books that are too short to be a book and too long to be in a magazine featured article or anything like that. So you can see here that here's your Kindle singles. Here's the new Mile 81 by Stephen King. We actually had an interview with the lead editor of Kindle singles and he kind of gave us an indication on um, a lot of best-selling authors actually denied uh, being published on Kindle singles. Uh, they have sort of a policy on things have to be relevant, uh, things have to be newsworthy. Um, they shut down way more people than they accept. So it's not easy um, getting accepted into this Kindle singles program, but it's it's small exclusive club at this point but he did let us know that they are going to open it up to a wider degree and uh, be more accepting uh, sometime in 2012 so you can see here's the kindle store uh, if you hit the settings menu you can also browse by all the mega all the 
you know, genres and categories and stuff like that here. You can even look for blogs and on this uh, blog somewhere is uh, goodyreader.com, your number one destination for all things e-reader. So now that I've shamelessly plugged our website, let's uh, just take a look at uh, some of the other features here. You can see that you have archived items. So these are books that I have purchased uh, from Amazon, you know, with a Kindle for PC or a Kindle for Android app. So let's just, uh, let's just download a random book. And uh, you can see how fast it actually goes. So very, very quickly. And you can see that it did start on chapter five. And that's where I actually left off when I was reading uh, this book on my iPad. So uh, all in all, I'm a big fan of this uh, new Kindle. It's mainly because of the portability factor. It does have a solid, you know, interface. You saw page turn speeds were really fast. Books download very fast. Um, the new Kindle uh, operating system does allow you a number of, uh, you know, different things. Um, I do like a lot of the new features that Amazon's really uh, put on, like such as social networking, popular highlights, uh, popular notes, being able to um, do everything like that. You can even rent textbooks uh, for your college or university. So it really looks like Kindle's really done uh, a good job with this new e-reader. Uh, what do you think, Peter? I honestly don't really know where they're going with this device because... They had a key. They had the Kindle keyboard before what what they are now calling the Kindle keyboard, but what was before called the Kindle Three, with the full keyboard and everything. And then just recently, months ago, um, probably half a year ago, I would say the Nook Touch came out, the Copa Touch came out, and these are all very similar to this, except this one is not touchscreen. And yes, Kindle is coming. Amazon is coming out with a Kindle Touch, they call it, which would be similar to the Copa Touch and the Nook Touch. I don't know where this one kind of stands because it isn't touchscreen, it doesn't have a keyboard, it doesn't have audio, it just has Wi-Fi. So I would say that it's a little bit less than those just in terms of its specs and all that. But other than comparing it to other things on its own, it is a very good device, it's very quick, it's much quicker than the previous ones with the upgraded firmware and all that. They just refined it a little bit more. Really the only downside I can see without penalizing it for no audio and no um, speakers because that is the point of this to make it thin the only downside I can really see is the keyboard I'm very naturally wanting to go to where a QWERTY keyboard would be laid out I cannot on this and you cannot change it any button you press while in the keyboard will take you out of the keyboard so other than that I really like the device it's nice and small nice and portable it fits in my jeans pocket actually so uh, yeah all in all I like it very much for seventy nine dollars for the That's Amazon thing, yeah, exactly. It is mostly for the price too, keeping it nice and squished, nice and uh, thin. You're getting a really good deal on this device. Yeah, I mean, no bones about it. This is probably the most solid sub hundred dollar e-reader we ever have. If you look at other e-readers around the hundred dollar or uh, below price range, you have you know like the Jetbook Mini, you have uh, the Allure Tech Air. Uh, the Libra Air, you have a lot of really crummy e-readers in this price point. And so I really think that Amazon has put all of uh, the e-readers on notice that charge $100 or less for their device. This is pretty well the best sub uh, $100 e-reader in the world in terms of form, functionality, uh, speed, uh, resolution, contrast, and tapping into a mighty ecosystem. So stay tuned to future videos on uh, the Kindle. We will be comparing it to uh, the new or the old Kindle with the keyboard. We'll also be comparing it against other popular e-readers on the market. If you're thinking about making the switch or you're just looking on understanding maybe the differences between the two. So for GiddyReader.com, my name is Marcus. And this is Peter. And we've just reviewed the Amazon Kindle Wi-Fi fourth generation.